Hello, I'm Ian. And I'm Darren. And welcome to the Average Bikers in a Cave, a show where a group of bikers chat and share opinions about all things motorbike, from news, reviews, interviews and the big questions. If you like what you hear, then be sure to subscribe, tell your friends and leave us a review. On today's show, along with our usual ramblings, we will have some bumper news straight from the motorcycle world, and also we'll tackle this week's double big question, can your bike be your only mode of transport, and what is my luggage options? This week's episode is sponsored by Afterground, an exceptional drone, wedding, portraiture and events photography and videography company that specialises in capturing video and images on the ground and in the air in a style that is modern yet timeless, interesting and vibrant, with a focus on accelerating moments and pure fun. Using their experience, skills and knowledge, they will work with you to ensure your videos and photos are exactly the way you want them. For more information or to chat to the team, head over to www.halftheground.com or check out their Facebook page. Check-in time. Well, what have we been up to this week? I think we've got a double check-in <laughs> here for anyone that's been a... Uh, had a wee look on the YouTube page, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook anything, we went out and we filmed our own mini-movie. It is a mini-movie. It and it's absolute quality. I think you and I probably have contributed to at least 50% of the views on it. I think probably. Because we just keep watching it, watching it, watching it. It is so good. If you are listening and you've not got a chance, pop on, have a wee look at the video. It's great fun. It gives you a nice sense of basically the, some of the great roads that we've got around where we where we stay because we, you know, we're know, only 10, 15 minutes away from my house anyway. So Aye, we weren't we that far away. No, absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's just a nice week kind of introduction. You, you actually get to see... No, you actually don't get to see what we look like, to be fair, do you? Oh, no, you do. You, oh, you, if you look two. really closely at number two... At number two. You have to watch your thunders, I don't know what you mean by that, but if you look really close at number two... <laughs> you look close at number two. Blink and you miss it, you know. Uh, everything else. Uh, and you'll see the, the tops of our heads, really, at one point. Aye. Helmet on, helmet off. I'll wait that out. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, so uh, that's, uh, in terms of me on the bike, I You've been out a bit, probably a bit on your bike, but certainly for me, um, spending um, the other day there, just got up there filming a wee bit of drone footage as well, which is really cool. A wee bit of kind of fun with the GoPro and the flow and all that, so just have a wee watch, see what you think. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, let you know what, what you think of the video. I think Dale's already commented. Dale has, Dale thank you, Dale. And no doubt there'll be others, but yes, feel free, comment. Yeah. If you do watch it, please share it and let everybody know about it. It's We'd uh, appreciate all the... I know. Just make help. We need to think about the sequel, though. Very true. Very true. Yeah. But there's some really nice bikes being released, so the sequel might involve that, hopefully. More about that in the news. <laughs> <laughs> what about yourself, Dan? Anything else you've been checking in on? No, that's been about the high rate this week. Um, Obviously, I was off on holiday this week. Not actually going anywhere. And as sure as fate, the minute you take time off, the rain comes on. And then the minute you go back to work, the sun comes out. And it's Scorchioso again. Yeah. So I'm a bit meaved with that one, with the man upstairs. He needs to get himself sorted. But no, no, we had a couple of little jaunts on the bike. And then obviously we had obviously went out and, and had the whole kind of yeah. whole morning and afternoon shooting that video, um, which cost me two Starbucks because of obviously our free manual labour that we drafted in. Well, I, well, I think it's... Um, well, it's not free because it costs me free. two Starbucks. It costs you two Starbucks, but it's, <laughs> a, it's that kind of way where you think it'll be really good exposure for them, you know, for their... What, to the elements? For their, for their portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, if there's a creative out there listening to us, you'll understand what that means when folks say, we can't pay you, but it's really good exposure. I know. Yeah. Aye. The exposure is what you feel when you can't pay your rent because you're stuck out in the street, you know, that's what they mean. Pay creatives, that's what I say. So in the rain. But not 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 the children of creatives. They are they are there to be used and abused <laughs> in terms of <laughs> video and editing and all that. Get them to do whatever you can for you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> family. There's no free for family, you know what I mean? I know. And then obviously you turned up and you turned up in your son's car. Yep. Which 
kind of made me feel my age a wee bit, looking at it going, yeah, I feel like we're doing a spatula, and I might get in that. To be fair, it's, I'm, I'm pretty close to that myself, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But nice wee brief, nice wee brief. That'll be, that'll be retired, obviously, once he sits his CBT, and also mm. the mutt. I'm, ah, the mutt, I, I yeah, got, got first, to see I the mutt, first, didn't I? I got a first view of the mutt, and the mutt is just, it's, it's cracking. Uh, it's thing, a gravy it? thing. thing. It's like something. I see the minute you took the cover off, it's like yeah, it's something a kind of Steve McQueen Great Escape piece about that bike. Yeah. It just has that look about it. That looks if it's gonna uh, jump in between and bombs going off behind it and stuff like that. Aye, aye, it's um, definitely not. It wouldn't be a place in an Indiana Jones movie. Aye, aye. maybe I should so. tweak it right to Glasgow last week when I know when they were filming all that stuff. I know that was and that was right by in the middle of St Vincent Street. Do you know that way you're looking at it and going, I know that building. A vague recollection of that building. But yeah. So, there you go. It, it's been, literally nothing's happened this week other than that video. Yeah, yeah. And then any other spare time we've had, we've just sat and watched the video. <laughs> you know. I, or shared the video. Yeah, or, or watched the video. video. Or shared it. Or, shared or it watched again. it. Aye. Or then decided to share it on a different platform. Or, <laughs> and, and I can assure you that over the next few weeks, there'll be 15 second trailers of that video, 20 second trailers of that video. I genuinely thought about trying to make up a TikTok account for us just so that I could put the video onto TikTok. Mm. But then I changed my mind. So, again, that's another thing that reminds you of your age when it comes to TikTok. Aye. And then you just lose days on end, so yes, oh no, go there. There we go. Right, let's crack on. What have we got next? Oh, it's time for the news. You forgot your wee lever with the news here, didn't I you? I forgot my wee lever. Yeah, Danny pushes his lever quick enough. Which is, it's just no fun at all. I'm going to let you go first because. There's no triumphs this week, so <laughs> you've got to give me a different bike to talk about. <laughs> and this one actually genuinely got you excited. It did. It genuinely got me excited. Um, literally, as we were finalising the notes for today, um, Harley dropped a new bike. Now, knowing the way I dropped my new bike the, the, the day after I passed the test and bought it, no. <laughs> I was going to say, some of those Harleys are dead easy to drop because they, they weigh like half a ton. But they have actually announced the new Sportster S. The new Harley Davidson Sports at S, and this is the second Harley Davidson to feature the new Revolution Max 1250 engine, which is the one in the Pan America. Yes. Um, which we talked about a few weeks ago. Yes. Um, now, it's a variant of the 1250 engine, and it's labelled as the 1250T, and the T stands for torque. I thought you were going to make that in a quiz there. Yeah. Okay, I see. Mm. I was going. To either, it was either going to be a quiz or a funny voice. So I went for the funny voice option. Yep. Yeah. Good, good choice. Good choice. Yep. This engine has been turned to put out greater torque at lower revs, unlike the Pan America Rev Max engine. Rev Max probably because it revs at maximum things. Aye, and it's got a wee bit of a BHP. That's the technical the term. Revs at maximum things. Revs at maximum things. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's pretty lightweight for a Harley talking about dropping bikes. It's um, two hundred and twenty-eight kilos, uh, and it's coupled with twelve newton meters of torque. That is immediately available and it remains flat all through the rev range. Aye, that's 125 newton years of torque. I know. I like to read out Darren's misprints, you know. That's because this literally dropped. Aye, so. <laughs> no long after I'd sent the I was, I was about to say 12 newton years of torque. Wow. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Aye. Me thinks. Not much get me other than me that. <laughs> <laughs> me thinks there's a, there's a number missing there. Uh, 125 <laughs> newton meters of torque that is immediately available and remains flat through the whole rev range. I think that's um, about 94 foot pounds of torque. Was it? Aye, mm. roughly. It's roughly about the 90, 94 pounds. Check you in your imperialist ways. I know. I know. I, I wish they would just unify it and just say, listen, this is what it's going to be for you on. That's it. We're going to get rid of the other one and just use this one. It's not that Americans to use metric, is it? Well, no. No. Maybe it's because they found it in Glasgow. Yes, if you get a chance to watch the video, <laughs> right? we have shared it on shared it on the average biker's Facebook page. Not yet, no, we're not. No, well, but I will be doing that. Uh, keep a wee eye on the Facebook page and have a look at the video. You will see the beautifully empty streets of Glasgow, um, and uh, and I'm going to say beautiful, but actually, when you look in the distance, there's loads of graffiti and stuff. They've they've not actually picked the nicest. I know, but it's like, but it is a bit kind of urban graffiti. Aye, I suppose. Uh, aye. The, any normal time, those streets are never that empty. Yeah, it mean, uh, just so it's pandemic cool. has made it twenty eight days later. So, if, so if you're listening, in Glasgow, to spend, spend, uh, play, spot the street corner, you know. Yes, 
you know. Uh, but yeah, no, absolutely love the bike. Uh, and I, I was kind of when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that looks a bit weird with the big exhausts and the kind of pan and all that and everything. And I was going, mm, I don't know. And then just as as uh, the more I looked at it, the more I realised how little you have to clean it, which is <laughs> which is like a massive thumbs up for me. Yes, there's you know, there's literally no chrome, zero chrome on yeah. there. And they make a point of telling you that they made a conscious decision not to have the engine dipped in chrome. The engine actually looks amazing. You've got this beautiful kind of cherry, browny, chocolatey, chocolatey cinnamon thing. Aye. Uh, and you know, and it almost looks like it's covered in ceramic, doesn't it? It's absolutely aye. Great. The headers are done that different colour for the yeah. actual I mean, main body, and yeah. it's just uh, aye. It, it just it's off. You know what I mean? Doesn't it come in yellow? No, I know, but it does come in that vivid black. But vivid you know? black with that. Could put a wee aye. Batman symbol somewhere there in yellow just to. Just to kind of balance it out, just you know? <laughs> a wee head tip to the yesteryears. Exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, full Brembo brakes and full adjustable show suspension, front and rear, with inverted front forks. Um, it's got a seventeen-inch front wheel with a small cutback fender. It's a tiny wee fender, isn't it? It's, you know, it is literally uh, aye, it's what, ten centimeters or something. Like that. If that, uh, if aye, that, it's aye. totally. Uh, when I was massive, big chunky tire, a super chunky. Super chunky. We've yeah. gone back to episode seven of Steve from. Uh, it gives it what Harley are calling the bulldog stance. It's a right, I mean, uh, it's a, it's got a right kind of chunky wee kind of front to it, and it's got a wee thin uh, pill shaped headlight, the same as the modern uh, Fat Bobs, which are just which. When I first saw them, I thought, do I do I not like them? But when when they're on and the LEDs on them, they look. I think they look amazing. It's just dead unusual. Yeah, it's dead. And un- I think that's going to be. I think they say that's going to be a regular feature. That pill, yeah, pill box. The, kind of I think they kind of want you to know from a distance that you know that's a Harley coming. Aye, you know. I mean, I know back in the day when things like BMW was one of the first car manufacturers to put the LED lights in and that kind of blue glow, so you knew from miles away. And that that's what night, it is. Like, that's a BMW coming because of that. So I think that's the kind of the kind of look they're going for. And yep. I, I have to say, it suits that bike beautifully. You know, that we kind of almost like we kind of uh, grill, we kind of grrr, Aye. you know. Kind of bare your teeth kind of thing, we kind of chunky bulldog thing, you know. And it, but you don't know whether it's going to, you know, bite your leg off or jump your lap and cuddle you, you know. Bit heavy to jump on your lap and cuddle you. Very true. Sit sit beside you and let you stroke it as it leans a little gently into your thigh. How about that? Again, again, two hundred twenty <laughs> kilo <laughs> leaning gently. <laughs> oh. You can maybe lean gently into it then. You know, <laughs> uh, it's got and do you know what I did love the, the four inch round TFT. That is. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, right? So full TFT display with digital gauges, um, or as Darren's typed, Didigal Goages. So <laughs> TFT with Didigal Goages. Um, <laughs> you could tell I rushed it. <laughs> <that. laughs> that is literally how quickly we got that information. We wanted to get it into the podcast. Um, different riding modes, three set riding modes, and a customized, right, customizable one, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. But then it's also got Bluetooth connectivity, um, turn by turn navigation. You can f- put your helmet and your your phone up to it. You so can you pay your uh, your music and all that, all that so kind of stuff. Back so. to is it episode two. We talked about music. Yep. Yeah. So you know you've got this beautiful thing that'll actually let you know what's coming up next. Next track next and, track. and, and you can adjust. Tracks. They've got controls on. You can use you can use the controls to control your volume and your tracks and all that. But the thing about it is, is if MD's if MD's got or had an old sportster. Uh-huh. Right, the old Sportster had a four. It must have been four inch. If it wasn't four inch, it wasn't a kick in the re- rear of it. But it was a four inch kind of dial thing, and it had a little kind of display thing in the middle that had like your gear indicator. Mm-hmm. Unless you had a stage one, in which case that just didn't work. But it had like a clock, or you could change that to be the rev limit or not. So they kind of kept that dial, but they just made it TFT, uh-huh. and they just managed to cram everything else in there that you could possibly want the only thing i didn't have a look at and see was have they done the same thing that they've done with pan america and changed the indicators so that it's one indicator lever on that one side right um as opposed to normal harleys which are one night side why another right. side so that way you go that way and that way you go that way um so i don't know if they've well, done that i never However, saw that. I would get great delight in strolling into Halle this weekend to have a look. Yeah, some if it's there. Sure, some of uh, have, have a wee wander in myself at some yes. point. Um, that sounds like me and Nicholas should take you and Susan out for a coffee. Aye, do you know what? That sounds like a plan. And Harley's just kind of 
ideal just to go for a coffee. Aye. Aye. I like nice cup of coffee. I like your way of thinking. Leave it with me. <laughs> so it looks I like I like I like your description here. I wouldn't have maybe put it quite so succinctly, but I think this works. It looks like a fat bob and a street rod had a flat tracker love child. That's what it is. You know? Between that headlight, chunky wheels and that big double cannon exhaust thing. It, that's that to me is cut straight off a fat bob. It's it's a it looks chunky but sleek. Aye, you know, and but the street rods is just that wee bit weird, so it's almost if like they've just taken mm. it and slimmed it down a bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at the picture of it just now, and um, at the moment, uh, if you watch the video, it's quite it's just the basic bike they're showing you, but they're going to uh, with a single seat, you know, like the old sportsters, and but they're, they're mm. bringing out some, some lovely accessories as well. Um, but one thing you've not put in the notes here, but we were talking about earlier, is it's technically got a heated seat. Aye, the, just with the way the, they've done the the way they've done the exhaust, there's like three or four different layers of insulation and fiberglass coverings in the exhaust, or some sort of nylon fiber thing or something. Um, uh, and uh, it all sounds really cool. But what it does is it directs the heat away from the exhaust, so you're not going to end up with this one warm leg, one freezing cold leg, and it blasts the heat under your seat and out the way. Which is a heated seat. Which is a heated seat. There we go. You know, maybe your Jeep's got a heated seat, but I'm gonna quite like it. My bike had one. Um, so uh, it's it, it looks amazing. It's starting price uh, for the vivid black, which in our opinion, the two of us is probably yep, absolutely, absolutely the best looking colours. Um, with the engine header colour looks cool. Uh, um, so the Harley Davidson's same colour as that kind of brassy, dark brass, cinnamony, chocolatey colour. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna get it Harley uh, and ask what is the official colour for that? Yeah, because it's it's it's. it's, it's, it's it's a kind of coppery, Cop- aye, chocolatey, aye. chocolate copper or something. Maybe. Aye, something like that. Mm. I don't know. It didn't say. It doesn't say on the press notes or anything mm. like that. So it doesn't say on the website. So but the, the starting price for it is thirteen nine nine five. So thirteen nine nine five. It's you know. I, I would like to see it a couple of grand cheaper. Aye, I was going to say your, if your starting price for your your Triumph Bob wasn't linked like that or eleven. 12, Aye. those kind of prices. I would like to have seen it running, but then, but it is also a brand new bike with a brand new engine, which is aye, you know, aye, and it has a got a point. lot of tech and gadgets on it that these bikes don't have. You know yeah, I mean? the only thing again, I'm going to play devil's advocate, and don't get me wrong, I love the bobber, the Triumph bobber, I yeah. absolutely love it, right? However, depending on what this looks like in the flesh, I would looking at it on, the, on paper, I kind of prefer that. To the bobber, but I w- I'll reserve judgment to see what it looks like in the flesh. However, thirteen nine nine five, you can get the Pan America for not much more, albeit yeah. just the standard edition. But still, you mean yeah. it's four? I think it's fourteen two nine five, so three hundred quid maybe yeah. gets you the standard edition. So you know. yeah, I think for me looking at it, the only thing I'm thinking is, is how wide is it? Because they they they're quite keen to tell you the paint work makes it look sleeker and thinner than it actually is, you know. So the way the Harley Davidson's written in the tank and everything looks as if it's almost going to go into the tank, and uh, it, it might be quite a, a, a wide bike for wee short it's part like me. Oops, I'm allowed to say. Can you bleep that? Out? I'll bleep that. Out. So we we short legged people with me with them um, that kind of that, that might be tippy toed on it. I don't know how the seat height in comparison to the width would, would work for me. So, but I'm I never saw the seat height actually. No, I never saw no, no, there was nothing mentioned about the seat height. Just that it's but the wee girl that was doing it was didn't look particularly tall. So no, she didn't. And it was on a and I think it was on a bench. Aye, it wasn't a bench. Aye. So I, I think that was on a bench. So we'll see what it's like to sit on as well. But it, uh, I do think um, they've they've definitely taken a lot. Of, I mean, there's been a few bits of criticism over the years about Harley just sticking to the one formula, one formula, one formula, and then they tried the with the, the Buells and stuff, and it didn't really. No, and they had it with pan the, out there for them, and they brought out the uh, F the FXDR, Aye. which was you mean supposed to be a bit more racery kind of sporty bike, but it was massive. Mm-hmm. It was overpriced. It was just mental. This um, is probably a wee bit overpriced in comparison to what you can get from other. You know, but if you're a Harley, if you want a Harley but don't want a big Sons of Anarchy type thing, it's it's a lovely, lovely looking machine. Absolutely. And see if you want a Harley and you want your f- and you but you want a first bike. Mm-hmm. The Sportster was never a. You mean there'll be folk listening to this screaming, going, "You're talking nonsense!" But I had a sports stuff on my first bike, and it was probably a mistake 
to buy the sports stuff on my first bike, I should have probably have looked for something else or saved up and maybe bought like a fat bob or something. Um, just because it's a bit more yeah. nimble. Um, but I, this this could be that this this could just completely destroy that. Um, it has front facing, it has front forward pegs on it, but again, like the old Sportster, they are doing a mid kit conversion, so you can have the foot pegs back, in a, ah, back nice. in a normal which I, position. Which I think I personally would prefer, but that's because I'm so used to riding in that position. Aye, wait, wait, you've ridden in that position, then yeah. you go, oh, here, this is quite comfy. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, and you go, this is like lying on a lounger. Aye, fall asleep at the handlebars. I don't know if that's possible, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Aye, I'm gonna let that. I'm, I'm not gonna comment after my typos, my titty gal goages. Go yeah, you know I mean that's just titty gal, titty gal goages. <laughs> like pink it's, panther moment. It's, it's absolutely, <laughs> it's like a pink panther villain that rides a motorbike <laughs> with his titty gal goages. Oh, that should be the name of this show. Uh, episode eight. Episode eight. Did the go edges. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that is the new Harley Davidson Sports <laughs> Dress um, with his Diddy Gargo edges. And uh, um, that, what have you got for us next? Uh, unfortunately, no more go edges. No? Um, CCM turns fifty, so the British bike brand CCM or Clues Competition Machines, to give its full name, uh, is celebrating its fiftieth anniversary. So the Bolton-based company. Um, who have released a range of Spitfires over the kind of last three years, was originally founded in 1971. In the 70s and 80s, those bikes were competing at the kind of high end of motocross and trails, um, but also they did some road racing as well. In the 90s, the company then focused on making road bikes that had that kind of dirt style yeah. based feel about them. So they did the R30 Supermoto and the GP40 Adventure bike. But again, they weren't a massive sellers. By all accounts, the, and with no doubt, the biggest success they've had has been in 2018 when they launched the very first Spitfire. Yep, which, the again, I mean, it's tubular steel, hand-built, lightweight, 600cc, industrial-looking engine, uh, industrial-looking bike. Because it literally just looks like somebody's taking some scaffold and bent it and cracked uh-huh. it. But they look lovely. And the attention to detail on them is phenomenal. The Spitfire did go on to breed so many different variants from a cafe racer to a scrambler to a ball bar and even a flat tracker. Now, working with a couple of the UK homegrown biking legends like Carl Fogarty and Dougie Lamkin, they've created beautiful machines that these guys to this day still endorse. Um, to celebrate CCM... 50th anniversary they're producing two new bikes based on that same Spitfire DNA um, you're going to get a street tracker and a street moto still with the same 600 cc 55 brake horsepower engine that hand finished frame but both around 150 kilos and that's not a typo 150 kilos I was going to check with that that's that's light that's Do you know what I mean? that is impressive um, so these things will shift um Again, like all other, CC, other CCMs, there'll be a whole load of add-ons like when you customise it, when you build it and configure it, there's just so many bits and bobs that you can that you can throw in there. Um, but expect to pay around 10 95 on the road for the kind of standard one. On a side note, CCM has now also hit Hollywood um, with a Black Widow bike, um, as featured in the latest Marvel movie of the same name. Um, but they're also in the upcoming Mark Wahlberg movie. Um, infinite um, so aye they're getting some serious exposure that's what Triumph have done recently with the, the, the Bond films and all that haven't exactly. they exactly you know and they'll have paid a few quid to get their bikes put in that so but it's a it's, oh, a, it's a, amazing and absolutely. the Black Widow CCM's Black Widow bike is lovely again it's one of those hands you go oh I really want one of those um, but the new ones come in yellow yes. dun, 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 dun. Um what I will say about CCM is, is that there was one of the local dealerships here had one uh, a couple of years ago um, in the showroom for sale. The owner, had one previous owner, I think it did him 600 and something miles on the clock. That would be a limited edition one it was in? It would be a limited edition. Well, 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 no, it was a Spitfire. No, it was a Spitfire. It was a Spitfire Scrambler 6. Mm. Um, the Triumph had one and it was a limited edition. Aye, it was in, tri- aye, oh. it was in there. Aye, that's the one. Um, they wanted 11995 for it. 
and then eventually dropped it to 10.995. Brand new, that bike was 9.895. So the second hand market for them went up went because up. what CCM do is they make limited editions of those bikes and that gets them past the kind of Euro 4, Euro 5 kind of standards because they're not mass producing the same bike over and over again. So very clever on their part, but they're absolutely stunning. If I ever won the lottery, I would definitely have one in my garage. Oh, absolutely. With it, with it, I doubt. I mean, looking at looking at the, wee, the the ones that are coming out, they just look fun, like super fun to just jump on and go. Just jump on and go, mm-hmm. aye. And I would definitely have it in yellow. Well, hopefully, the you mean the Scrambler is the only one I've ever sat on, um, and it was really tall. But then mm. Scramblers tend to be yeah, yeah. tall. Aye. The Ducati one, the twelve Ducati twelve hundred, the Triumph twelve hundred. I was on the I was on the nine hundred scrambler and it's tall and it was tall. Yeah, I mean I've got you short leg. I was looking at off to the side to keep it. You I know, just, ooh, nearly dropped a couple of things. Slide know. the cheek. Nearly dropped a couple of things. Thankfully, didn't. You know, before I handed it back to Triumph after having it for a couple of days. So there you go. It's a great funny ride that. though. Great funny ride. Oh, I can imagine it would be. But your leg gets warm with that high up exhaust. <laughs> Which, aye, aye, there you go. There you go. So hopefully Harley will, ha- Harley's triple or quadruple layer protection is going to do the job. But it shows you how much we like that Harley bike when we're talking about CCM. We've managed to bring the whole conversation back round to the sports race. But uh, aye, aye. Right, right, we'll, we'll, we'll quickly move we'll quickly on. move on. Next up, we've got uh, Norton are unable to fix Generation 1 V4 SS. So at the start of the month, Norton Motorcycle Company, which is owned by the India company TVS, have written to the current Generation 1 V4 SS owners and told them that the company will be unable to fix their bikes as they have found 35 significant faults. Ouch. Yeah, that is no good news, is it? <laughs> now, the Gen 1 was built by the previous company, NMUL, who have since went into liquidation. So legally, the new owners didn't have to fix the bike, but they had said that they would endeavour to try and repair them. So, question is, who's going to fix them? If you get 35 significant faults, who's going to fix them? Well, that now falls back onto the NM, into, onto NMUL, or the liquidators and owners will now need to seek a claim against the original business. Robert Henshaw, the new CEO, explained all this to current bike owners in a letter explaining that they could not rely, reliably source all the parts needed to repair the bikes safely. And in the letter, he also reiterated the previous statement that these bikes should not be ridden on the road due to the number and severity of the defects. That is worrying. That is scary, you know. Um, Henshaw said that the new V4, once in production, will be a new re-engineered bike and in no way a continuation of the old model. And they are hoping that production can start at the end of 2021 and any Gen 1 owners can purchase a new one at a special price with a two-year warranty. Would you, after the last one? After selling out all that money? And then, oh, I don't know. No. But then there's a there's another twist to this. There's a very small article. I think I think it's in this week's MCN. Right. Um, and it's literally just like a, I wouldn't say a footnote, but it's literally just a tiny sweet column on a page. And MCN had had a a conversation with TVS Motor Company when they took over Norton and said about obviously what they were going to do with the V4 SS models, the Gen 1 models, etc. And they said that they were just going to build the new one and swap them and they would take up the fight with the liquidator, right? Now... Ever since they, they said that to MCN and then went completely quiet, MCN have been chasing them to say, you say wait that. a minute, now this is happening, what's happening? And they've went completely radio silent. So Maybe they didn't expect 35 defects, significant defects, causing... Um, the idea was good. Do you know what I mean? To say, listen, we are the bother you've had, you've been stuck in limbo, we'll fix them for you. you know what I mean, or we'll try and fix them for you. Mm-hmm. I think that it was a great gesture of goodwill but again 35 significant defects and then they can't find a reliable a reliable source for the parts to make them safe that's the big thing it's the safe word keeps coming up you know what I mean don't ride it because of the severity of the defects which means it's no safe Aye. you're like I'd be I'd be heartbroken if I spent all that money on my on my dream Norton and then that happened I mean, I suppose it, it will depend as well on what the special price is. Do you know what I mean? 
Aye, it's, aye, that that's true. It will, dis- no. it will it, depend. Is is it a way of getting? Because there could there could be some sort of I'm not going to say tax dodge, but there could be some way that they have to charge something for the bikes to do the swap, like you know. Aye, and and because it's a different company and and all that, I, who knows? I, I suppose it's waiting to see the the full end of this story, and we'll keep, we'll keep you updated as we know more. Aye, I think um, this one's going to drag on. Aye, for, absolutely for the but rest of this year at least. It, it puts people completely into limbo after waiting for a year, over a year. Um, and finding it was happening with their, their, as you say, their Dream Nortons, and now they're like, right, well, we thought we were going to get a different one or a new one because we're going to get a swap, and now it's like, well, actually, no. But we'll give you a special price. So, um, you know, you know, and, 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 and I think, five and, and I was going to say, if the, if the <laughs> special price is there's a couple hundred quid off the price of a new one, you're going to be like, away, you know. But, if, to buy but if the special price is, um, you just got to put the, the you know, We'll swap them round. We'll take. We'll need to take your old bike off you, but we'll swap them round and we'll give you it for a real minimum cost. I suppose, like on the road cost Aye. price. Then maybe it's more, <coughs> more durable. Do you know what I mean? Watch this space. I'm. I'm pretty sure MCN are no by chasing them. Based oh God, on no, not, absolutely not. Snippet and I think. I mean, how many are we talking about here? That's the thing. How many? How many are we talking about? Because don't know how many they did in full production. It does probably a. It's probably an article for your way back. If anybody knows, drop us a few messages. Let exactly. us know. You know, uh, cause, and and maybe they've, they've underestimated the numbers that that have them or the numbers that the the defects are in, and that's why they've made that statement. Is you know, yep. and actually, in order for the company to even exist, there's no way they could just replace them. No, you know? and that's the thing. If they're going to have to fork out mega money to yeah. swap them over, then it's kind of counterintuitive when they've just bought the company and they're just trying to get it back up and running. So mm. I can see the point from that perspective. I think we all know from anything to do with liquidators and all these kind of things, if you're going to chase somebody, you, you'll be lucky if you get five pence in a pound. Do you know what I mean? Aye. You know, that kind of, that's that kind of ridiculous. Aye, you'd be lucky, to, you'd be lucky to get a St. Anne 125 mm. or a moped for that. Yeah, exactly. For what they make it back on it, so... All right, I'm going to try and lighten the load. Lighten the load. Lighten the lighten the mood. Go for it. Yep. Um, BMW is annual update time. Da, 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 da. Now BMW is in, in my mind is never anything that I would sound just light in the mood. That's a seriously compared to not. Aye, I mean, it's definitely light in the mood. Mm. Um, BMW this um, at the start of the month announced that the their annual refresh. Um, which can be anything from paint, equipment, software. Well, that'd be why right. every second thing on my Facebook page at the moment is test drive this new BMW. Test drive this new BMW. Quite possibly. You know what I mean? Because uh. they're, they're coming. Now, there's some stuff, uh, there's a lot of things on here that are, are not the most exciting in the world. Um, the new, the, the let's let's just run through them and it'll make sense. So the, the G310 uh, GS uh, is going to get the triple black treatment the same as the big boy same as the the big 1250 and the triple black is nice in the gs if they want if, if you haven't seen it see it it's stunning um the g310 r uh, now comes in metallic blue the r90 scrambler and the urban gs which is the kind of off-roady ones are getting proper off-road tires which is might suit some might not suit others yep. the f750 gs the 850 gs gsa and the F nine hundred XR will all get the triple black option as well, which is good. Yeah, because again, triple black is lovely. Yep. I, I can't highlight that enough. And um, there are some other color schemes that they've introduced, but nothing of note. The new R twelve fifty RT, which is the one, which is my bike, but the newer version of my bike with the TFT and stuff like that. It's getting a software update to make the favorite button assignable. So you can actually sign that to be one specific thing. Whereas right now on the bike, you can uh, set things to be your favourite and then you can scroll through them. Right, okay. Which is great unless you get three or four things in there. You know, like heat eclipse, heat to seat, you know, when you're kind of flicking through, you'll be still choosing the menu button. The 1250 GS is getting an optional pannier holder. I'm going to shake my head at this point and go, what is an optional pannier holder? Surely the pannier clips to the bike. Why would you need a pannier holder? Unless it's for hanging them up in the garage. No idea. The 1250 RS comes in a new sports scheme with a red frame, which I'm interested to see that because I think that might be quite nice with a red frame on uh, it. Aye, that might but be interesting. Wee, nah, wee bit extra that's the little flash of colour there. Aye, mm-hmm. the, but that's the Ducati Monster 
eight two one guy in me that's gonna go ooh mm, yeah, red yeah. frame. That'd be nice to see. Uh, the S thousand XR is getting the triple black option as well as an M pack option, which means you're gonna get that M sport colour scheme. Now this is where significant changes happen. S thousand RR, the pocket rocket, the sport bike. It's now getting the M chassis kit as standard. So it's going to make it even sport than what it already was. It was a previous option. They've now just scrapped the M pack or the M package and you're just going to get that sh- whole chassis change as standard, which is awesome. They have introduced it or they've changed the, the kind of optional extras now. So you actually, the optional extras you get now will be a dynamic riding pack and a race riding pack. Again, that bog standard S1000RR, I haven't ridden one. However, it's like silly speeds. Why would you want a race pack for it unless you're buying it for the track? In which yeah. case, you've got too much money. <laughs> um, the big R18 gets some new paint colours, but nothing really to shout about. And all of this will be available in your local motor ad from August. Now, this is the exciting part. None of that is just of any relevance, in my view, right? Because it's just a different colour package for most of them. And aye, the triple aye. black. A couple of XB button presses for that. Sir. Exactly. <clears throat> but trademarks have now appeared for an M1300 GS. So very similar to the S1000RR, you can now get an M1000RR, which is the kind of high performance version. Mm-hmm. Like it needed to be anyway high performance. <coughs> They've now registered the trademark for m 1300 GS. Does, does this mean we're going to get a high performance GS? Da, da, da. Watch this space. BMW have been seen out test riding a new GS, but it's all kind of covered up very hush hush. You Aye. just don't know. <coughs> now, the only thing I can think of is that the current 1250 shift cam engine, they say it's water cooled, but actually it's not really water cooled, it's part water cooled. So the bits that get really, really hot at the top of the, uh, the top ends, that's water-cooled. The rest of that engine is air-cooled. So are they going to go for full water-cooling? Are they going to go for like a water jacket? Um, which helps reduce the sound and the emissions, which means it might meet Euro 5B, which don't know when that's coming, but it can't be that far away. Yeah, I don't know. Be interesting to see. But it means they can control, if, if they make it full water cooled, I think they can control the combustion a bit better. So I don't know if that's got something to do with it, but an M1300 GS. Oh, that would be, um, aye, that'd be pretty cool. Aye. So, but I don't expect to see it this year. It'll be 2022. Which well, if they're only testing it un- under cover ah, exactly. just now, you get aged to go. But that might be just around about the time that I'm due to trade up. Hey, <laughs> hey. However, another thing about BMW, um, which I think is great, and it's not just bike related, <coughs> but if you're ever in Munich, right? Because BMW, as we know, stands for Bavarian Motor Works, right? Or whatever works, yeah. Two points. Yes, thank you. If you're in BM, if you're in Munich, they've got the BMW. Kill McComb, yeah. Bell. Yes. <laughs> um, if you're in Munich, right, they've got the big BMW museum and everything there. And on one floor um, of the museum, they've got all the bikes. Anybody can go in and sit on top of any of the bikes. It's great fun to do. They're all just clamped to the floor and you can just have a play. So as soon as these bikes come out, they'll put them up on that floor in that Munich Museum. So if you're in Germany, you're you're down that neck of the woods and you want to have a look at them all. I'm kind of thinking long weekend city break to Munich coming. Absolutely. And and, and, um, and lots and lots of beer. But uh, Sorry, bikes. No beer. I'm right. And... uh, but it's it's an amazing thing before you then go through to the the kind of museum bit. But this is on the modern. I thought you meant that. I thought you were, I was thinking you were going to say before you go through it in the bar. Uh, you, you walk through. <laughs> you, it's great. You walk through it and there's there's the cars and there's the Rolls Royce and that because obviously they're now part of BMW and all that kind of stuff. But uh, you can go up the stairs and it's just like it's just like a floor of bikes that they're all clamped in. Anybody can jump about and sit on them and see what they're like and everything. And uh, and they regularly replace them all the new the new bikes are out. That's cool. That's very does cool. sound like, uh, and it is probably one of the best places in the world for beer. So it's like a win-win situation. I've never been to Munich. I've been to Berlin, and I, mm. I'll, I'll definitely vouch the beer is tremendous. Yeah. So, um, so if you are out and about in Germany, down down that way, and uh, you want to sit in a few different bikes, go for it. It's uh, it's an amazing 
uh, and it's free. And it's free. It's free. Mm-hmm. Just walk in and have a wonder about, you know, just while we're talking about BMW, just a wee plug for the uh, Bavarian Tourist Board. Bavarian Tourist Board. Free bus, free free for Minor Glen and BMW. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, this year they celebrated, or last year they celebrated the fortieth year of the GS, right? And here's an interesting fact: see, and I'm going to bring it full circle just for the sake of it. See the Harley Davidson Sportster; mm-hmm. it's been on the road longer than the Porsche 911. They did mention that, didn't they? In that video, that's very cool, isn't it? It's, it's been out it's just shows you how well, long. Do you and know and mean? the Ford Mustang. They said the Porsche 911 and the Ford Mustang. Which is just nuts. Ah, it's, it's crazy. Absolutely mental. It's like crazy. Yeah, brilliant. So, there you go. So, the, the kind of whole point of the news is, is go and check out the new Harley Sportster S. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty much. But keep an eye out for the BMWs because they should be as sexy and slick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll all be black. And they'll be... And um, they'll all be black. Triple black. <laughs> and that was the news. The big question. Oh, you're wobbling your lever this time. I don't even know why I bother because <laughs> I <laughs> take it out EQ it anyway. So <laughs> yeah, why even bother? It's it, it's for the dynamic, the, the, the dynamicism of the conversation. It is. It, yes, is, it, get, it gets is. it gets our juices flowing for <laughs> the big question, and the big question is actually coming in two parts today. It's kind of a double ender family show, <laughs> um, and uh, so the question one, big question part one is. Can your bike be your everyday mode of transport? Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. That's fine. Okay, right, that's so it. moving on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I would say yes and no because we live in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to counter that and say depending on your job, depending on your bike, and depending on your bike, it could be, right? So, for example, let's say... You've bought a brand new Harley Davidson Sportster S, right? We're going to keep on this theme. We're going to plug the life out of it. I was about to say, that Harley Davidson brought a new Sportster they S. Have, I know mate, nothing they, about that. They have. Maybe if you listen to episode eight of uh, Average Bikers in the Cave, <laughs> again, you may just pick up on, we may, we may have fleetingly mentioned it earlier on. Only after you've watched the video. Yes, exactly. Um, if you, you're in your current job, and obviously you have to go to work. Yep. I don't mean that as in you have to go to work, because we do it at the... I mean, the, the guys chat with on to your TV and stuff like But if you've you've actually physically got to be at that location mm. and you've bought a brand new sports dress, right? I work in a different industry and I am, I can do hybrid working. So I can work from home because we've been doing it through the pandemic, yep. et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I've got a, for talking sake, I've got a 12... A 1200 GS or 1250 GS, right? My bike technically could get there, even in the crappiest of weathers, but I don't have to because I can work from home. You, on the other hand, have to be there, but would you really want to take that lovely brand new piece of beauty out on the roads when it's like four inches of snow and it's been icy the night before and you just don't know what's under there? I mean, that's... Yeah, absolutely. So, I th- so I think it can be both. I think I think um, as an everyday mode of transport, then yeah, and I, I suppose it's, it's the definition of everyday. Yeah, um, in the sense of is the, does everyday mean every single day, or does it mean everyday as in you know normal standard? You know, uh, you know, Aye. you know the, the the definition of the word everyday means everyday. Yeah, but you know, like. Your, say your everyday mode of transport is a bus, yeah? Yep. There are days you can't use a bus. That is true. But you, for normal modes of transport, so maybe can your bike be your normal mode of transport? Yes. Absolutely, without a Absolutely. doubt. I don't think anybody can deny that. No. But can it be, can you use it every single day? There are days just travelling's not safe. There no, you're days, right. The buses are off, you know, the trains are off. There's, yeah, I, mean, you, I think you your no bike option. probably is maybe less... You'll be able to, you would be able to use a car on, on worse weather days than a bike, you know? Yep. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, but can it be your everyday mode? Probably only if you have the right equipment to go with your bike. 
So go tech suits, waterproof trousers, change of clothes in your work. Stabilizers. Stabilizers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Snow jeans. Yeah. I, but no, you know. I, tot- I, I totally agree. And there has been days where, uh, I mean, I had an old 850 GS and it wasn't the greatest weather. I would never have took a Harley out in it. But the GS just kind of didn't yeah, really bother. Uh, it just went, all right, let's uh, go. And away it went. And, I mean, you could easily spray that whole thing from top to bottom without any kind of epic. Yeah. The ACF 50 or whatever your chosen form of protection was. Um, so, yeah, I think it can be. I think you're absolutely right, though. I think it's just a case of, don't get me wrong, if you're, I mean, if you're a self-employed windy cleaner, then I suppose you couldn't use it because... How'd you get your ladders and stuff like that on it? But Aye, but I mean, but for for me, going to work every day, and I have to, I, I physically look after people in my work, so I've, I have to go and look after. I can't work from home. Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I will take the bike on on pretty much any kind of weather. I've got the ability to change my clothes. I've got the right waterproofs yep. and all that to go around. So yeah, I think I think I'm. But there, but but I don't think any mode of transport can ever be every day. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I think probably I, th- I think normal mode, normal yeah. mode of transport without a doubt. But every day, I don't think there's there's not really anything that can do that. No, I think if I think if you were if you, if you only had a bike and you didn't mind getting the bus on certain days and all that kind of stuff, yeah, I I don't see why it can't be. I I don't have a car. You mean I'll be my wife's got a car, but mm-hmm. I don't have a car, yeah. um, and I'll quite happily use a bike rather than use it. Yeah. Um. And I've got a big top box and panels and that, so I can fill it to the gunnels. I mean, if I'm going anywhere. I suppose that's another thing, you know. At the moment, I don't need any equipment when I'm going to work. Yep. You know. Um. So and if anything I do need, I can chuck in a rucksack. You yep. know, that's fine. Aye. You know, and when I was when I was working in an office in Glasgow, then you know, and could park the bike under the, you know, under the building, that was brilliant. You know, and and you could leave your stuff in the office, you didn't have to worry about it. You're absolutely fine. Aye. You know. I spare a pair of shoes and all that. Just the office and there you go. So um, yeah. So I think yes, absolutely, it can be an everyday mode of transport. But it is a bit. Uh, if you're not a, uh, if you if you don't enjoy being on a bike, why would you have one? But you know, do you know in a sense of maybe maybe you know you've you've kind of lost the, the 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 love for it or the passion for it a wee bit. Then I can understand it being a bit of a drag for people to have to f- chuck on all the clothes and the boots and everything, get into work and then get changed and all that, and then sit for eight hours in the office and then look out the window and go, I'm going to have to go back up the road, 20 miles up the road. And the chuck, well, it's chucking it well, down. it's chucking it down, you know. I know. But on the flip side... You're getting home in 20 minutes as opposed to an yeah. hour. <laughs> I'm no sat on a bus, uh. breathing in everybody else's stench, especially if you're coming home at like five or half five when the buses are absolutely cramped. And and in, and in the current situation, it's far more appealing than sitting on a bus with anybody right now. Aye, I, and I say it's 25 degrees or 27 degrees or whatever outside. I mean, even 20 degrees outside, I would so much rather be in like a Gore-Tex suit out on uh, uh, the bike than being shorts and t-shirt and sat on a bus. Mm. <laughs> I would just a no-brainer. So I think you're right. I think it's I think it's less about the bike and more about the definition of every day. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I mean, you, if if every day was like the last couple of days we've had, well, no, no the rain, but the next last couple, the next couple of days we're due to have in Scotland. Saturday, um, Sunday is potentially 27, 28 degrees. Ah, uh, absolutely. And I am working. Uh, boo, I'm not. Boo has, uh, <laughs> did the gal go ah, geez, That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> too shit, too shit. And uh, yeah, so I think um, it is possible. It's absolutely possible, but you really have to want to be on a bike to do it. Aye, you know, I, I'll give you that. It, it, it's only your everyday mode of transport if you want to be on that bike every day. You know, you yep. can you, you can you can put up with a car whether you like driving or not because it's a necessity. But you know, so I, that, that's my opinion. In part one. Yeah, no, I, I would completely agree. I think depending on your job. Depending on where you live, and depending on like, what type of bike you have or mm. own or whatever, I mean, I think, that, and again, you need to want to be on the bike, or you don't mind being on the bike for 10, 20, half an hour, whatever it is it takes you to get to work and back. Um, I do like the fact that it, having to focus on the bike and be aware of everybody else, and you I mean, constantly being monitoring drivers especially in Russia by the time I get home my work day is 
completely vanished from my mind. Absolutely, it's, it's that's a, a brain that's wipe. A great point. Absolutely, yeah, you do. You you you, you focus on that so much that you forget all about all the other. And the same in the morning. Going in in the morning, rush hour. By the time you focus and all that, by the time you get to work, you're awake and mm-hmm. alert, and you're like, "Oof, I'm ready for the day ahead." Yeah. You know I mean, so it's it's that wipe at the start and the wipe at the end of the day that I quite like. I, I know previously when I used to get the bus in the work, I'd fall asleep in the bus. So you're getting off the bus going, oh, don't you, you know, Aye. And you're off the bike, you're like that. Bing! Hello! Uh, <laughs> you get that buzz about you. Mm. Yes! Teeth full of flies. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go! So yes, so. I, think we're, I think we're in pretty much agreement yeah. on that one. Relati- that was a relatively easy one, but it's a, it's a nice one to cover just because I know if you're out there thinking about a bike, you know, uh, and thinking, you know, think about why you want a bike and think about how you're going to use a bike and then that will then help you choose what bike you want. Aye, and I think know? most people when they start, again, correct me if I'm wrong, and I think, you know I mean, like obviously John is doing his CBD shortly and we'll have a chat with John once he's once he's been through it yep. and stuff. But it'll be interesting to get his viewpoint on it and whether he then goes, ah, we're taking the car anywhere. I'm taking Aye, the I'm bike. Yeah. Purely because it's that initial... Oh my god, I love this! I want to be on a bike. I want to be learning. I want to be building up my experience and all that kind of stuff. I think it's the. I'd love to know, and this is a shout out to the listeners. I'd love to know is some of the older riders that we've got that have been riding constant for 10, 20 years. Do you still use the bike for work? Do you still keep going in and out to work on the bike? I know for a fact there is definitely one of our regular listeners has a little. Royal Enfield Himalayan. Is it Himalayan or Himalayan? They call it Himalayan. Yeah. But it's Himalayan, Himalayan because they've got the Himalayas and all that. Uh, so, so again, Fitzy, if you're listening, fantastic at your viewpoint because I know you you use yours to go back and forth to work and you love it and regularly post on Facebook because you've just did a wee detour on his way home mm-hmm. just to take pictures of his bike and cool spots. Um, so, I fantastic to see just... If with and age that changes, and then if there's anyone out there that actually uses their bike purely as a commuting tool and doesn't use it for the pleasure side of things, yeah, because I think I think there must be people out there that have got a bike that you know that that, that use it for the for the practicalities of filtering, getting in and out of work quick, yeah, you know, and all those things. But actually, maybe then the last thing they want to do is get on it at the weekend and go for a run. Aye, you know, unless. They're using like a smaller capacity bike, yeah. like a 350 or yeah. a 400 or a, even a 500. And then at the weekend, they're going to blast on their big adventure bike or their sports bike, their big thousand jicks or whatever it uh, may be. I've, I've never I've never really spoken to a biker who doesn't love everything about the bike, you know. No. And, you know, and if you if you watch our video that we, we put together, you'll see the, the joy of being out in the open road in the bike. Just, you know, visually it just shows how much... It's the freedom. freedom you've got, but th- th- there must be. P- we'd love to hear from you if you're that person that's kind of going. Actually, you know what? I'm listening to the average bikers because I just want a bit of practical advice around what it's like to have a bike for commuting for every day, or you know, air, air quotes every day use. You know, normal use. But I'm not wanting to be three, four, five hours in a saddle. You know, um, putting weight on, biting umpteen cream scones and the way around a route. You know, but. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know. You know, that'd Aye. be cool. Aye, absolutely. And it's I always d- it's always crossed my mind that other people out there that, that treat bikes like some people treat cars and a necessary a necessary mode of transport, but they they don't have any love or passion for it, really. You know, I'd be interested to see if there's any of those people out there. Because again, I find it very hard to, to believe because Aye. you know I don't think I've ever met one, but it, it would be curious. And maybe it's in more built up areas like London. In, in Birmingham and things like that where there's, where there's an awful lot of congestion and traffic and everything you know aye that people are using them or are they called scooter users <laughs> do you know what I mean because that's the only reason I would ever buy a scooter just to beat traffic beat, beat traffic, congestion yeah. charges or that kind of stuff aye, or aye, aye, if I've got a second job as a pizza delivery driver aye. Aye, okay. so with that in mind let's jump to part two yes Mike's luggage Mike's luggage. Mike's yep. luggage. Uh, absolutely. Who the hell is Mike? Yeah. And this is Mike, no, Mike, this is no mask belly mistake this time. 
No, this is actually my <laughs> spelling mistake this time. Um, we should talk about Mike's luggage. Uh, Who the uh, hell's uh, Mike? Mike uh. So, um, autocorrect, the joy of autocorrect, for some reason changed bike luggage to Mike's luggage. I didn't even just change it from bike luggage to Mike luggage. It I'm, went going, I'm going to change the description. A group of average dyslexic bikers. Exactly, yeah. Talk about bikes yeah. or Mike's. Yeah, talk about Mike's bikes. Aye, and Goagis. Uh, digital Goagis and Mike's uh, bikes. Uh, but I, I couldn't believe that it changed the word bike to Mike's with an apostrophe S. Do you know how many, do you know many Mike's? No, I don't actually. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? If I was going to write that, uh, the only thing I would be talking about Mike's would be um, karaoke and that would be M-I-C. Aye, and not and M-I-K-E. Yeah, apostrophe, apostrophe S. S. Anyway, so it's about bike luggage. Um, bike luggage. But Mike's luggage um, for, for a bit of amusement there. Um, so, carry on. Now that we've just established that this whole show yeah. this week is all about yours and mine's spelling mistakes. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like a sketch for the two Ronnies. I know. Uh, so, yeah, either assuming that you use your bike for all round as an all round mode of transport or whether you're just a weekend warrior, what kind of luggage can you get for your bike? That's as simple as that. Yeah, aye. Sorry, what kind of luggage can you get for your mic? For your mic, what I kind of? We're going to change uh, it. We're going to change it. Aye, because uh, I think I think for a lot of people, like when I got when I look at my Triumph, my Triumph, uh, the Wee Street is cafe racer looking. You know, yep. it, it looks it looks fantastic. To stick any form of luggage on that at all would just completely change the look and the handling of that wee bike. It's so kind of. I'm going to change your mind later. Are you? So something like you know, because it's a single seat, don't you? Wouldn't, you wouldn't stick a top box and things on. Oh God, no! On that, you know. Oh but God. you might think about a wee set of kind of old school leather panels and stuff like that, you know, because then then you're kind of making it look a bit more funky. So, um, so it's, to, it's we'll just talk you through the options, and then you can maybe see what suits your type of bike. Aye, and there is so many options out there. We are literally. We're scratching not, the surface. We're not even scratching the surface. No. We've literally just picked at it. In a we're little. not even. We're not even unclipping the first clip. <laughs> the first <laughs> clip. <laughs> what are these clips? You know these oh. plastic clip things. They must have a name. They don't have some sort of name. What like a ratchet idea? You know, just like it's clips. Like clips. They must have a name other than clip. <laughs> you know, like a, like a like a Nylander clip or a. Crosby clip. I'm just looking at you. I really, I really need some sort of whole music to swing. Dun, 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 you know, dun, you know normal service will return shortly. You know, it's like a belt clip or a aye. plastic. I know, I know what you mean. Plastic pushy clip thing. But you know what I mean? Can I think? You know I mean? Let's start with top boxes. <laughs> <laughs> right, carry on. Go for it. Top boxes. Uh, they're probably one of those things that you see frequently on motorbikes. And why is that? Well, honestly, I don't know, because they're ugly as sin. Um, however... Although you've got a lovely... Yours has got a lovely action. Oh, aye, but mine's is a proper BMW factory fit jobby. So it's... If you're, uh, ever, if you're ever looking at them, just, just get them to open the top box. It's got a beautiful action. It comes with a carpet mm. and an interior light. There you go. It's like that's when you know you bought a BMW. You get a carpet for your top box. Uh, I bought it not for the top box, purely for pillion, and it's just comfort for coat for my youngest when she's on the bike. Um, for overall volume, uh, for va- volume, for overall volume and value for money, they're not actually that bad. Um, also, it does give you that additional. Um, it doesn't give you that additional width you get with the panels, um, and you, but you do get the the extra storage, and you get some sort of backrest for a pillion, which I say is the kind of main reason that I'll do that. Aye, aye, absolutely. Um, now you can get a top box for pretty much any style of bike, whether that be a cruiser, a sport bike, whatever. Admittedly, they vary in price dramatically. Um, again, depending on the size, fit, and make of your bike, the whole shoot and match. So what we'll do is we'll just pick out a handful of generic ones that will fit kind of most bikes and they're, they're roughly the size of a helmet because I think they're essentially where kind of a thing to pop your helmet in really weren't they yes don't don't don't, don't look at me with those eyes <laughs> right do not look at me in that tone of voice you go first <laughs> okay so let's start with a cheap option okay uh, there's the Kappa K30 NT monolock top case which is a 30 litre top case um, and it's 45 quid which is actually not which is a pretty decent... It's not breaking the bank. It's not breaking the bank, yeah. It's waterproof polypropylene construction, anti-scratch surface, can take about three kilos in it, so you can pop your... 
headgear in there. It's safety equipment. Safety equipment. Um, it's got a built-in reflector. It's got a monolock plate included, universal monolock plate, and it's really storage for a single helmet. It's essentially what it's there for. It's fine when you say it like that. It's fine when you say it like that, okay? <laughs> it is absolutely not a problem. I'm just not going to bleep stuff out. I'm just going to put the... Egg. This is this, this yeah. version's expletive. Yeah. Uh, uh, 415 mils uh, deep, 485 mils wide, and 350 mils tall height. So for simple extra bit of storage, if you're away for the weekend, it's cheap and cheerful, does the job. Boom. Five How easy is it to fit your bike? Any ideas? Uh, uh they're fairly straightforward. Right. Do you know what I mean? There's and imagine there's still like a standard kind of kit you'd put onto the frame. And Aye, again, depending on your bike, right. do you know what I mean? Um, some, come, some already come with like the extender plate on it, you just need to fit the, the monoblock plate thing on yeah. it. Others, you might need to get a little bracket to fit the plate on. Again, it's much it's much dependent on what type of bike you're fitting it, to. But how much is it? Now, for somebody like me who's got a, a, a wee bike that looks great with nothing on it, right? Um. I wouldn't put a top box on yours. No, you wouldn't put cause cause, cause, cause even removing the top box, you still got all that. Kinda well, you've got the seat cowl, so right. you've got that wee that wee kind of almost bullet cowl in the back. Yeah. So to put that on it, it would take away from right. the, the look of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean? you maybe add it if you were putting the double seat pillion on and have it as a wee extension. But, Aye. but but then if you're taking that top, to remove that top box, you'd have to take all the brackets never enough to make it look good again, wouldn't you? You would. You know I mean, different if you were out travelling. So if you were away for a, wee- a weekend and you had it on there and you just wanted to take the top box off, it's just kind of, they usually, you open it up and they unscrew Aye. to the inside and then just pop and take it off. I mean, you get some that have got fancy clips and stuff like that, but nine times out of ten, they just unscrew to the inside. Um, so you might, let's move it up then. Let's okay. say, let's go for a mid-range sure. one, right? So you've got the, the is it the Givy or the Jibby? That's a good question. Givy. Givy. Well, let's go with Givy. Givy, Givy. Givy, Givy. We all know who it is because they make loads of stuff. But the Givy V40 NT Tech Mono Key Top Box. 40 litre box, approximately £99. Now, that's a 40 litre capacity with a maximum load of 10 kilograms. Oofed. Again, big enough for an extra large helmet. It's 400... (laughs) What is it with the most boring of subjects with bikes? Do you know what I mean? It just sends us. It's 440 miles deep, 530 mil wide, and 340 mil in height. Uh, so it's a, a fair size bigger than the... the so is that a wee bit bigger? Well. Aye. It's never going to stick out beyond what you, your mirrors or your bar ends or whatever. But um, it comes in black, again, with smoke reflectors. So they're kind of grey, but they still reflect, which is quite cool. Makes mm-hmm. it look a bit sleeker. Um now, with most um, of these, you need to buy the base plate separate because they are specific to match your bike. Again, this is just with the kind of higher end or the mid to high end um, Jivy ones. And the same for some of the other brands as well, so it's not just them. The Universal um, Monarchy plate is running about 42 quid. And that's for the kind of, it's like a reinf- it's like a, almost like a rubberized plastic. It's right. really a weird... It's a weird substance, mm. do you know what I mean? Um, but they are, because they, they have a bit of give in them, but they are st- like structurally solid. Um, so I, you can I get a metal one. They, they do do metal ones, but they are slick. They, they, are, they are slightly more priced. Bump your price up. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But then, if you're going to bump your price up and money was no object, you can look at something like the GV, GV, uh, uh, we all know who they are, OBKN58B. Yeah, which sounds like some sort of star date in Star Trek, right? They just yeah. roll off a tongue, don't they? Absolutely, yeah. You can, you'll can. you remember that when you walk into the shop. Aye. Excuse me, sir, I'm looking for an OBKN 58B. I'm looking for an OB1 Kenobi 58B. Yeah. Obkin 58B. Trekker Outback Blackline Top Box. OB must stand for Outback, yeah? Anyway, uh, Top Box, uh, 58 litres, yeah? That's a big box. And it's on... <laughs> <laughs> and it's on sale at £310, normally £400, and it's, it it doesn't look like a traditional top box the way you think they're kind of, kind of a bit rounded and a bit kind of, you know, like, they scream, you know, put your head protection in there, that's what they scream, mm-hmm. whereas this actually looks like something that, that if it fell off your bike and a tank went over it, it would still be completely utterly intact. Aye, you would just pick it up, or, or it would scream out. 
again. Aye, exactly. So it's a big, quite a square box, like something that would hold something incredibly precious in there. It is Aye. like a flight case. Yeah. And that's, that's what it looks like. Aye. Look, look, you'd see the roadies bring it on to bring it a, like, a big Marshall stack or something. Aye. It attaches to any monokey plate. It's got an aluminium structure. Maximum load of 10 kilos, so it's still the same maximum load, but if you're putting much more weight than that in the back of your bike, your bike's going to go up and fling you behind you anyway, do you know what I mean? Exactly. So, uh, capacity of 58 litres, reinforced technopolymer inserts, which uh, sounds comfortable. Practical and durable design, easy to fit and remove, and its depth is 454 mils, width 555 mils, and height is 323, so slightly shorter than something that's a bit more bulbous. So, Good use of the word. Bulbous. Do you like that? Thank you. Yes, I. And you managed to, I managed to say that, but we keep your face straight, which is quite good. Um, and this is the way. proper off road looking top box. The kind of thing you'd see in the back of like a Triumph Tiger or something. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Um, doing the da- or something, doing the Dakar or something like that. One of these big square metal things. Serious bit of option. Probably got some sort of key to uh, some sort of nuclear weapon that James Bond's trying to get, you know. That would open up and it'll go ticky down the amount of, amount of numbers. Aye. Would you keep it? Would you keep it? For some reason, he'll, he'll manage to stop Uranium it. Uranium right rods. Yes, Aye. exactly. He'll manage to stop it right on 007, won't he? Um, a, if you have a pillion, you should splash for the optional cushion. Because again, it doesn't look very comfy to lean against. So a wee cushion at the back would be. No, I would agree with that. Yeah. All these top boxes are available on sportsbikeshop.co.uk. We are not sponsored by them, but I have used them myself and they're actually really good. Same. A company to buy uh, stuff from super quick delivery really easy to deal with get customer service but as we said there are a large number of make shape sizes and colours if you shop about and I'm sure if I looked hard enough I'll find a yellow one so I haven't seen a yellow one but that's not to say they don't or exist. black which just flashes a yellow the only option we'd ever mentioned was manufacturer's own ones that you can purchase when you're purchasing a your used bike uh, and sometimes you can haggle to get a bit of a deal whether it's getting it with free fitting, you know, I know Triumph, when you buy a new Triumph, any excesses you buy, they don't charge you for the fitting. Uh, I think I got my, I got it colour coded free, I think. Oh, there you go, so, uh, there's options, but I think if you're pushing it, and especially the market is at the minute, uh, with COVID and things, you might get a, a pretty decent deal if you're adding your excesses on at a time. You know? And the chances are, they're probably made by one of the big companies. Aye. And just rebranded. Because yep. I think the metal BMW ones might be Touratech. Or they used to be Touratech. Um, so, and they're one of the big brands. Anyway. Aye, cool. So, let's talk big luggage. Or as it's commonly known, panniers. Sometimes known as saddlebags. Nope, straight face. Well yeah, done. straight face, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Aye, let's not go there. Hey, no. Come on, go on. So, these are boxes of... Or bags that are actually fitted to the side or each side of your your, your back wheel arch. Um, now again, like top boxes, you can get a style to match pretty much any bike. Some bikes come with them as standards, like tourers, high end adventure bikes, top end cruisers. However, that doesn't mean that if you want to tour on your Jixxer or your Fireblade, you can't get them because you can. Let's have a look. Yeah. Firstly, let's cover off the adventure bike market. You know, your Triumph Tigers, your your big uh, your big kind of Ewan McGregor bikes, as I call them, you know yep. what I mean? Uh, 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 which it says there is the Ewan and Charlies of this world, you know? So, if Ewan and Charlie, if you're listening, which I know you, you regularly listen every week, we wish. Please listen, Ewan. Please. <laughs> Charlie, I've been buying quad locks because of you. Please listen to our <laughs> podcast. Um, so we'll start at the expensive end first, right? So a Touratech Ziga Evo X Special. Again, they roll off the tongue, these things. They're so easy to remember. Um, Pioneer System starts at £1,088. Ouch. Ouch. But they do, again, I mean, if I was getting an adventure bike and I was going mega turn on it, these are the kind of things you would be probably worth investing in because of the strength and the, the durability of them and the kind of stuff that you'd want to take. Um, plastic corners protect your driver and your panty in the event of an accident. They've got proven fixing pins for the Zega Evo accessory holder. Proven handle for comfortable carrying. These things kind of clip off and on, don't they? So you can... Oh, they literally just go yeah. to uh, So easy mounting and secure holding the panty rack. Lockable one-hand locking system for convenient and secure attachment to the panty rack. Lockable lid catch for convenient opening and closing from both sides. Thanks to a nice practical hinge function. So they will open while still... On the bike, you know, yep. to take them off to do all that kind of stuff. Uh, silicon seal for panels that are dry on the inside, even in the pouring rain, and that's kind of key for, you know, if you're out on a touring bike, you're, you've got to have it secure for all weathers. 
Um, attachment eyes for secure fashion of the pannier lid bags and other soft luggage. Standard hooks on the inside of the lid for attaching accessories, bags, nets, etc. So, yep, they're expensive. They are 45 litres each and come with a steel rack for mounting. But while they're not bulletproof, they are definitely one of the best you can get. Would agree. How many times have you seen an adventure bike, especially since, what, 2004? Aye. Did, I'm going to call them Hoddit and Doddit go around the world on the old, original uh, 1100 GSEs, and they were loaded with these steel things, Aye. and they had cars running into them and all sorts. Dropping them left, like, falling off a Aye. sandbanks and all this kind of stuff. And, just and I noticed somebody had put a thing up online. Um, my fact, it was one of the one of the patrons for Teapot, mm-hmm. Teapot 1, they had actually created a little plate that fitted on the top of both of them. So when you took them off and sat them down, you put this little plate on the top and it fixed to the pannier and it gave you a wee table. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, ah, that is genius. And it was literally just a little bit of like an aluminium with a little hinge on it so that they could then fold it up and it slotted straight in the side of the pannier. Oh, nice. So it didn't even take up that much space. Take it out, boom, table. Table, brilliant. So great for camping. Nice. Now, if you don't like that industrial look, um, there are canvas options and this is my favourite by a long shot um, they don't make them for my bike um, but then I've got panniers for my bike so I don't really need them they come as standard you've got, you've got uh, you come you don't you aye but if I had an adventure bike and needed panniers this is the ones that I would go for this is the Lone Rider moto bags um, the Lone Rider moto bags come in at 870 quid um, and this is for a 31 litre on one side and a 38 on the other because obviously the bag's shorter because you get the exhaust on one Aye, side. Of course. Right? Um, and that comes with the mountain plates. Now, you still need to have a frame for these to fit on, but most adventure bikes these days come with the frames on them anyway. So that you just get the mountain board and you fit it up and the bag fits on there, no bother. Now, what I like about these bags are they're flexible enough so you can load them up. They're safe enough so that in the event of an accident, they don't hurt pillions or um, riders or whatever. But the best bit is, is when you're not using them, they f- fold right in. They concertina in, and then they just get two wee straps that you just pull tight, and they're flat against the boards. They're literally like an inch. Oh, that's brilliant. I've seen so it yeah. means then when you're at the bike, rather than having to take them off and lean in the garage or whatever, be an optional pannier holder, um, you can actually just go over it and concertina them in. And then if you're at someone and go, oh, I need to remember to pick up milk. Pop up in the two wee catches or clips, but bags open, put your pint of milk in, and away you go. Genius. Absolutely genius. But at a price. But at a price. Now that's the thing. They are at a price. Um, Again, Lo- Lone Rider do a whole lot of other stuff. We're not sponsored by them, but again, biker stuff specific. They do some really cool tents that you can, that has a gap for parking your bike and stuff like that. And if you want to go camping on your bike and they're really lightweight. Um, so, uh, yeah, check out www.lonerider-motorcycle.com. But their pannier bags are definitely... Nice. They were what I would have if I was having an adventure bike with canvas bags. I like it. What well, if you got a sport bike or a sport tourer? Well, GV, 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 EA100B, which is probably a bit easier to say than some of the other stuff. Yep. The Easy T expandable panniers at 40 litres for an and they cost £94. The expandable, kind of, is that a slightly hard shell round the front, but kind of canvassy? So they've kind of, I they almost the sides. look as if I, you can, they've got something ha- in them that holds that shape. Slightly hard plastic bit at the sides, but I, um, you can get up to 40 litres capacity. Is that for both or is that for one? Who do we, who knows? Velcro fat to fitting straps, a detachable shoulder strap, two elastic bungees with hooks, reinforcements in rigid plastic, there we go. Rain cover, depth 180 to 180 mils, width 530 mils and height 320 mils. They just fit over or under the seat of any bike, including sports bike and retros. And I used to have a, when I first had my, my, my Sony, my Suzuki, where did I get Sony from? Sony making bikes now? Ah, well, there you go, eh? Um, my Suzuki, um, I bought a, 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 a pair similar to that they were they? they were like 40 quid or something the Oxford ones yep you know and actually they were they, they did literally there was like three velcro straps two go under the seat one goes over the seat and then a couple of bungee cords to hook onto the frame uh, and I used them for years they were great you know for on and off nice and easy and you could just weak them off and they'd handles but you did have to remove the seat and all that just to to chuck them off but they were weak 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 them off. them off if you're listening from another country weak means it uh, removes swiftly 
Weak. That's a really good okay. definition of weak. Free move swiftly, um, but with a slightly Scottish flair. There you go. Whilst building your kilt. Um, so um, if they're they, they look very similar to the ones that I'm the, the ox ones I had years ago, and they're super easy to use. Aye, there's loads of that style. Loads there. of them sticking about, and you don't have to pay ninety four quid. You could probably get them for about forty quid. I mean, if you and if you're only taking them out in dry days and stuff, and it's just for literally, I'm going out for a couple of days, or I'm just you know, yep. I use it my nipple. I see my brother in Ireland, and it's enough to put my stuff in. You know, Aye. Yeah. ideal, ideal, nice and easy. Now there are so many different styles of bags, right? Even just those ones. Um, but again, that's that's of a same kind mm -hmm. of yeah. model. Um, there is so many other different styles out there. So there's an Oxford Heritage 40 litre pannier, like that, That's which good is more like a, it looks more like, like a kind of messenger style bag yeah. thing. Um, it would look good in the mutt. Oh aye, it would look really good in the mutt. Um, again, they're £94. You've got the Shad SR38 Cafe Racer panniers, which is a bit more like a, a kind of leatherette type thing but again 10 litres for 93 quid Aye. but again it would suit a certain style of bike suit, suit a certain style of person yes we'll leave it there Yeah, have a look at them and then yes. you can make, and, your, own, and then you make can, your own decision and, and then feel free to comment and let us know yeah, uh, what kind of person you think owns these scooter owner um, and then I scooter quickly owner. <laughs> scooter owner <laughs> I think it was a geography teacher. Um, that scooter owner, same uh, thing. Owner. <laughs> and then you get the Kappa Rambler. Possibly modern studies. So I just like <laughs> Kappa Rambler. Carry on, Kappa sorry. Rambler RB 100 side bags. So it's 28 litres in total, 150 quid. I quite like those. I actually those really like them. They, they, you know, and I was thinking probably if I was to get something like that for my bike, they're quite nice because they're kind of traditional but a bit modern, a bit like the street cup, you know. It's, Aye. If only they did them in yellow. Exactly. Okay. Actually don't. Yeah. So you don't want bulk at the back or you're not needing that much space. What are your options? So you can get a tank bag or a tail bag. Again, like panniers, there's loads of these and most will fit most bikes. It's a kind of standard thing, isn't it? You know? Yep. A um, couple of tank bag options that we quite like here. Cheap and cheerful first. The GV GV EA 106B, 106B, easy to magnetic tank bag. Six litres of holes, 35 quid, you know, so if you're just wanting something to chuck in a couple of things, you know, it's got a nice wee bit at the front, kind of plastic bit at the front for your phone and all that to just slide in. Aye, phone, wallet, it's all a pair of pants it's and a pair of socks. Exactly, exactly. It uses two magnets to fit two metallic tanks. It's TFS compatible for non-metallic tanks. What does TFS stand for? Pass. Yeah, we don't have a clue. No. TFS? TFS compatible? Yeah. Don't know. Tight fastenings. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I, maybe. Mobile phone pocket, as we said. It's got an inner pocket. It's got a detachable shoulder strap so you can look stylish while on the move, walking around. Pop I'm sorry, but there's no way. There's I nothing stylish about that. There's nothing stylish honest. about that if you're wearing that. That looks like, okay. Strapped over your shoulder. No, there's nothing stylish about that at all. Uh, reflective inserts, supplied with a rain cover. Uh, the only issues with a magnetic thing is obviously you need a metal tank and sometimes they've been known to scratch your paintwork. That is true. So be careful. Yes. Uh, you can get you can get strapped tank bags. For example, Kappa's Alpha range uh, expandable tank bag, twenty to forty liters. The again, about the eighty five quid mark. Um, it consists of two expandable detachable sections, transparent map holder for each uh, in each compartment, anti slip rubber base, um, safety strap. Uh, to be secured to the headstock, rain cover included, reflective prints and removable straps for converting into a rucksack. Again, would never, ever, ever wear that as a rucksack. But there you go. There you go. Right. Possible bum bag. Um, but again, it's more hassle to take it on and off because you probably have it strapped under the tank and all that kind of good stuff. So it, it's going to be one of those ones. You wouldn't leave anything in it. No, no, no. Um, but Aye. again, and to take it with you, you'd look. Aye, but but then be honest, it's, it's you know they're, they're small enough that you carry it anywhere, you know. Rather that than have my paint lot scratch. Yeah, totally. And then finally, you get the fancy tank bag. Fancy tank bag. I do love a fancy tank bag. So something like the SW Motec Evo tank bag trail is that trailer trial? You've written trial. I don't know. I don't know trail I don't know. trial. 
Have a look, folks. Let us know in the comments I think below. It is the trial. Trial. Yeah. Um, which means you only get it for a short while. Then you've got to get it back now. Do you know why they're so expensive? The, just so you know why they're so expensive. They're 155 quid just um, for the bag. But do you know why they're so expensive? Why? Because it's not the SV Moto Tech Evo Tank AB643ZB bag. It's just the Evo Tank bag. You're the, paying for the lack of numbers. Exactly. You're paying for the ability to remember the name of it. That's the one. There you go. Um, but it's 155 quid just for the bag, uh, and there's a tank ring sold separately. So, you know, it's something else to attach it to so you get you get add-ons there that they'll, that they'll looks that they'll, nice though that they're kind of coaxing you in with and they're going come in and buy your tank bag and oh, by the way you're going to need a wee bit extra to fasten it on but it looks nice it does look nice actually it does look not as nice. a rucksack but as a tank bag. no but as a tank bag it looks great 15 litre storage space expandable to 22 litres so you've got a significant amount of space here in comparison to any of the other options uh, it's a 1680D ballistic nylon which sounds like s- s- serious pair of tights, but, but, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, she was wearing 1680D ballistic nylon. You sound like chastity tights. Chastity tights. Um, it's got a laminated EVA base, which ensures safe and secure fit. Integrated waterproof top map holder. I do love a map holder. Mm. You know, in this world of GPS, sometimes it's a bit nice to go completely analogue and actually just... Puff bit of map. map. Aye, absolutely. Uh, bag attachment and removal within seconds. It's literally just a little... Vid. I love that phrase, though, within seconds, right? Everything's removable within seconds. It might be one second, it might be 3,512 <laughs> seconds, but it's always <laughs> removable within seconds. It's the most vague... Um, <laughs> it gives you so much promise, but, but, but always just makes you want to get disappointed there. It's within seconds. Hold on, listeners, till I get Ian off his soapbox. <laughs> Marketing, grr. So, <laughs> um, where was I? I was within my settings, wasn't I? Aye. Two external pockets with dedicated cable holes. That's those wee stupid plastic crosses you see in Aye. jackets. You know those jackets you get, right? And I'm just going to go off my soapbox here because you get these jackets, right? And people have these jackets and they've got a pocket with a wee um, dedicated cable hole. And then there's a wee picture on the pocket that says phone. It's got a little phone indicator. Picture, you know what I mean? Who, who needs to be told what to put in their pockets? What kind of person needs to be told what there, to put in their pockets? There'll be people listening to this going, is that what that is for? And you've just insulted them. Did What did they do? Did, did they, are they going to bring out like trousers and put like wee pictures of legs but, inside each of the holes to say, this is for your legs? <laughs> Left. You know what I mean? Right. Left, right, exactly. Is it, wait a minute, we've both got a set of Bose noise cancelling headphones and what does it say on the inside? Left and right. Just uh, to no, be no, sure. no, 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 whoa, 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 you know, they're moldy to be the right, to, to fit properly on either side of your head, right, so, and to get the optimum, I, I, I don't mind that, because they're not visually obvious, but why do you have to tell people what to put in their pocket? How, how, how stupid do people think you are? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to compound your argument by saying, who in this day and age doesn't have Bluetooth headphones? Exactly, exactly, so actually... Um, SW Motor Take Evil Tank Bag Trial. The trial is wh- why you would need a wee cable hole in the first place. For a USB to charge it, to charge your phone inside the tank bag. Aye, alright, well you've got a point there. But, <laughs> in this day and age, according to Charlie, you want to get yourself a quad lock. So you wouldn't put it in the tank bag anyway because you just clip it onto the wireless. That's true. There. But if you've stuck it in there to charge it because you want to read your map and you don't want to cheat, Exactly. And by, to be honest, let's be honest, who needs a map holder? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but let's go there. Right? You know, the, 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 you know, you, you love the concept of whipping out a map and having a look and looking at Indiana Jonesy. You know what I mean? But actually, you don't know what you, you're looking at. You don't know what you're looking at, right? So, um, you know, so I've got a map holder. I've got a map holder here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, unless, of course, it's uh, holding your um, the the menu for the takeaway that you're going to, do to get your burger. Ka-ching. Ka-ching. Anyway, so rant over about that. Um, um, but jackets that tell you what you put in their pockets. Right? And there we go. Uh, which is completely off, <laughs> off topic. But Expensive tag bags, Yeah, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's got splash proof cable ports on the front and rear. That'll be for the popping in your phone to yep. charge it. Yeah. You know. Quickly move on. Neck compartments <laughs> in the bag, which are ideal for small items. Um, but does it tell you what the small items are? No. You can choose to do that yourself. 
<laughs> you can pick your own small items. Uh, it's got a handy shoulder strap, is included. And does the strap say shoulder? No. You know it's for your shoulder. You don't need people to tell you that. Um, it's a robust and ergonomic carrying handle, or basically, it's a handle. But the marketing people have put the word ergonomic in because it means your fingers fit around it. So I'm really I'm going off from one today. And, I do apologise. And I'm going to and it's got a little picture next to the handle showing a hand. Please tell me it doesn't. If no, you see it does, what, see what it does, honestly. It doesn't. I'm just like, trying you with a stick. Yeah, and you have. You've poked <laughs> me well. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Nighttime visible reflective details and it's compatible with a luggage cable lock. Um, so these clip on and off a mounted ring that fits to your petrol cap usually. Uh, ring tanks on average 30 quid but there are some about 50 pounds so there you go um, maybe when we want to you and you could probably get through this one quicker without a rant <laughs> shall we I'm hoping so uh, so tail bags it's a cross between a tank bag and a top box essentially uh, usually it'll fit under a pillion seat uh, and have a set of fixed clips that mount easily um, so that you can just essentially attach the bag onto it and off it so that you can take it on and off wherever you go now like everything else we've talked about tonight there's just a massive wide range of choice out there but I'm just going to focus on the one right because I think honestly for me there only is the one and that's the Krieger dry pack so whether you go for the combo or the dry pack it doesn't really matter it's the same bag essentially Um, you can buy it it's just a single standalone bag so the Krieger 10 litre dry pack is about 99 quid and that's got everything you need just to fit it straight onto a bike it's waterproof roll top closure compartment so you actually unroll it put your stuff in roll it in clip it and, and then fasten it super so it's effective so it's super effective yeah. universal fit to most types of bikes I'm going to say probably to any because where there's a will there's a way uh, easy fit quick release hooks uh, attached to web loops um, and secure to the bike's frame use individual or you can hook on other dry pack bags um, to create like a luggage system um, and we'll come back to that in a minute that's very cool I like that idea it's kind of Lego, Lego-esque it's kind of Lego-esque um, there's a side pocket and a rear mesh to provide additional quick access and storage you can use them as tank bags because Griega sell a tank bag converter so if you've got a smaller one, they do a, a five litre one. You could use that as a tank bag, um, but or you can fix it onto the back, or you can stack it up. Now this is the cool thing about these, um, is they actually all have connectors or little loops on them that they all can integrate. So you can buy the thirty litre bag, a twenty litre bag, and a ten litre bag, and just stack them up. And they just oh, all cool. hook into one another. Yes. And the fittings that they hook onto the bike with are the same that they hook into each other with. So if you buy a car, if you buy, say, a, a 30 litre bag and two 10 litre bags, you could have them stacked up 30 litre and then two 10s on top, or 30 litre, two 10s on the side. There's multiple ways you can hook them up. So it is that very, it's so very Depending on your less. style of bike, you can Depending on your style of bike, you balance. can balance. Nice. Exactly. And you can hook it all up and stack them all up. And again, they do 30 litre. 20 litre, 10 litre, I think you do a 5 litre as well, so mm-hmm. um, for me, yeah, they're expensive but, and it's not that you can you could use that as a, an actual rucksack Aye, like they do, that's they, one of yeah. those ones you could easily take off and look at as a rucksack yeah. and just go, oh, I'll just throw that one and that's a rucksack, Colin like who was on the show with us before, who will be back on at some stage, Colin I think has got a Krieger, or had a Krieger on the back of his V125, whether he's taking it to his big bike Quite probably because it's it literally, literally with the same fitting. Just That's a point. I don't think we said last week. Colin passed his test. I congratulations. I added a footnote in. Oh, did after you? After Colin had been on that week, just to say he passed his test. Oh, cool. So we'll get Colin back in. At some didn't point. say the footnote. Congratulations, Colin. You know, well done. We'll get you back on. We'll get him back on to talk about his big bike. Now that he's put, I think he's he's done stupid miles on it already. I think he's been on it. I'm surprised <laughs> he's he can still walk. He's been on that bike so much. He's in John Wayne. <laughs> exactly, I John Wayne. Get off your horse and drink, drink your, your milk. milk. I suppose the other option then, so the Krieger stuff looks brilliant, but I suppose the other option, and money is tight, is uh, just grab a rucksack you've got lying about the house or steal the Wayne school bag. Yep. The, the kids' school bag, for those that don't know what a Wayne is, do you know what I mean? Steal the kids' school bag. Translation moment. Yes. Wayne. Uh, Wayne. Scottish for small, small child. Small child or... 
or um, an adult who is um, agely challenged. <laughs> Benjamin Button. Benjamin Button. Uh, in terms of a cheap option, you can buy like a wee held 12 litre mini pack rucksack for 13 quid. It's just like a wee thin thing, just chuck on, you know, if you're going out for the shopping, pint of milk, go Aye. for bread. Boom. Uh, polyester outer shell, water repellent PVC coating. It's got an external pocket away strap, packs down it in a tiny wee small carry bag. So it's the kind of thing you could almost slip in your pocket and then just wake it if you need it, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you could jump up though. You could buy the SW Motec dry bag. Is that the SW Motec? They tell you what you put in different things. That's the one. Oh, That's go. your favourite brand. Yep. I hope they don't come chatting the door looking for sponsorship because if they hear this, it's that's it. It's snooker. It's actually, I just just in case they do right, and and the, and the worry, wild wonder they do. I'm not slagging them off because they don't have pictures of phones and things like that. I'm slagging no. off these stupid jackets that people have that they tell you what to put in their pockets. You know what I mean? <laughs> Especially, I mean, I know Gap's kind of gone under now, but Gap was famous for it. Everything you bought in Gap oh, told you what pocket you put things in for. Aye. Oh. Aye, was lit. I know. Anyway, carry on. We're, we're these the way we want you to. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the 300 backpack, um, it's a 30 litre total capacity. It comes it's in a it. conspiracy, I'm telling you now. It's a conspiracy between them and iPod makers and, and you know, music makers. It's a conspiracy. Uh, absolutely. Forget coronavirus, forget all that. The conspiracy is around buying. Phones and music players to put in your jacket. You heard it here first. Coronavirus exactly. was brought in by yeah. little funny diagrams telling you what to put in your pockets. Exactly. Here you go. I rest my case. In fact, I rest my panniers. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where were we? Yeah, 60 quid for the SW Motec 30 litre bag. Um, it's hard wearing, tarpaulin out of construction. Water and dust proof, again, that roll top closure structure. Very effective. Yes. Padded shoulder straps and waist clip zip out of pockets for smaller items. And it's got a nighttime visible reflective detail on them. So it's got a big strip along the back that when light hits it, it kind of blinds people. Which, again, if you're using it as an actual rucksack for your bike, that's the puppet. And if money is no object, we're up at our favourite brand for pannery bikey things, which is the Krieger R35 backpack at, wait for it, for a rucksack, £199 a rooney. Come on down! You have won the lottery and you've bought yourself a rucksack. 35 litre capacity, a unique quad lock harness. And that's not the company quad lock, though. That's a, that's, that's a that's if, different quad lock. I wonder if they, they know about each other. They've dropped the K, so... Ah, they've dropped the K, there's so no K safe. there. Uh, CNC 6061 that T6 alloy buckles, which sound impressive. Um, don't know what it means, but it sounds impressive. Two outer zip pockets, front mesh pocket with shock cord. Boo! Oh, that's my shock cord. Um, top zip mesh pocket. Inner A4 sleeve pocket. Optional add-on 5 or 10 litre dry pack. Is that those wee things we were talking about with the clips? Pocket for an optional back protector or hydro pack. Five millimeter airspace fabric. Oh, you've got to love a wee bit of airspace fabric, haven't you? Silky smooth, floats through the air, airspace fabric. Five do, you think do you think that's for keeping you cool so you don't get sweaty back? I think that's exactly what it's for. I think it creates a space for the air to flow. Tense. Between that and putting your hydro pack in it, it would just be yeah. nice and cool. Or unless it's a typo just for people who have got long. Luscious locks, and it's to let the hair dangle below, and it's a hair space fabric. <laughs> <laughs> On this it's podcast, quite possible, possible this week. <laughs> um, it's got an oversized YKK coil zip, and YKK, of course, is the BMW of zips. We know that, you know. <laughs> I don't know if you've been serious at this point or not. YKK, that is that is that YKK is to Does zips. I know that thing they panicked about in 1999. It is, yeah, YKK, that's it. So, the so YKK, all this hang on a minute, so all this time, Will Smith has been singing about coils up. Ah, exactly. Oh, I feel cheated. Yeah, because YKK is technically, there's two Ks there, so that's Y2K, YKK, it's the same thing. No. It is. It's a zip conspiracy. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Moving on. Um, yeah, the YKK, which is, of course, the, the Rolls-Royce of zips, um, because Rolls-Royce owned by BMW, so I'm still staying within the same... Yeah, more company. Yep. Loosely. Yep. Yeah, loosely. Yeah, it's it's got a Scholar Dynatech with integrated 3M Scotch light reflectivity, which basically means you shine a light on it and it will shine it right back. Shine a light, but kind of catching in a wave, you know. Shine a light stuff, you know. 
Eurovision stuff, you know. I was going to say that. It will blind you. Eurovision. It's got a 1000D DuPont Cordura on the base and harness, which of course is um, the material, hasn't it? Yes. Yep. Yep. 420D nylon ripstop, lightweight, extremely strong, and, and this is great, especially when you're scooting about your bike for umpteen miles and miles, a 10 year guarantee. I was of the mindset, right, when I first started reading this, I was the mindset of £199, I'd rather buy a full dry pack kit because I could buy a couple of bags and then either use them stacked up as a rucksack, as a tank bag, as a... However, it is the Rolls-Royce of rucksacks. Well, it does have the Rolls-Royce of zips. So and it has the Rolls-Royce of zips and a 10-year guarantee Aye. on a rucksack. Yeah, it's they're, just they're putting their money where their mouth is. Nuts. Yeah. Now, we have talked about panniers and top boxes and tail bags and all sorts. What we haven't talked about are two rolls, cargo nets, hydro packs, leg bags, bum bags, lap bags, helmet bags, organisers. The list is endless. Best bet, go out there, check out some luggage for yourself, check out the market. There are hundreds of them. I almost turned into Ahmed the, the terrorist there. You know the puppet? Oh, I Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Dunham, Dunham I. Mm-hmm. I mean, hundreds of them. Hundreds. I kill you. Most of the prices that we've quoted today, again, came from the sportsbikeshop.co.uk or from the manufacturer's pages themselves. But that's just, again, two options that we've looked at. There is countless different places. Absolutely, them. yeah. There's bike shows coming up because, obviously, they're... Birmingham NEC bike shows back on this year. Festival Speed was just there. Festival Speed was just there. There's loads of stuff coming up, so we're starting to open up now. So you might get a deal on some of this stuff if you go to the bike show or whatever. But go out there and have a look and see what suits your style. What Always remember suits. when you go and tell them you listen to Average Bikers in a Cave. I mean, it'll not get you any discounts, but maybe they'll start listening to you as well. So just let them know. Aye. Aye. And then maybe they will start getting a discount that we can pass exactly. on. Yeah, exactly. So it's not a bad idea. Aye. So. All these guys, they always give out these kind of codes, don't they, for things? I know. Uh, I did think, is there a way that we could be like influencers or something like that? On, but again, with what you and I have got on at the minute. Uh, we're influencing <laughs> just this, ourselves. Just this is enough. Yeah. I think I've, I think I've influenced a lot of people to look inside their range jackets to see what they really need to put in their pockets. I think you've, I think you've actually convinced a whole lot of people to actually cut those little things off and super glue the little holes up. Exactly. You know what I mean? For headphones, and the probably people out there that go, is that what they were for? I never knew that's what they were for. Again, if you're one of those people, please join the revolution. <laughs> I was going to say let us know, but maybe no better. Join idea. the revolution. Super glue up your holes. Family show. Family show. Family show. Um, conclusion. Is there a conclusion really on luggage? I, I think the conclusion is that that if you are going anywhere in your bike and you need luggage, you will get something that suits your bike. Aye, I, I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't. And suits your budget. It wouldn't put me off a bike. Um, thinking, oh, I don't know if I can get luggage for that bike. Mm. It doesn't really matter. Aye. And so, and some of the luggage for some of the bikes, some of the bikes that you may like, my bike, I wouldn't consider it to be a bike that would suit luggage. But there are some lovely options out there that actually would, you know, wouldn't. Aye, if we take were, away if, the, the if we if we were going to go, if we if we say right, let's go and do the North Coast five hundred. Let's yep. take four or five days to go and do that, at least you know now that there's some trendy bags out there that you get enough stuff in, mm. but doesn't take away from the look of the bike. And still let you have a nice wee Instagram moment when you're taking your pictures. Exactly. Yep. And that doesn't have a little cut out thing for headphones in it. Exactly. Because we don't need them. We know what pockets are for. We don't need to be told. You don't need to tell us. I'm waiting for the first comment. I never knew that's what the was before. I know. And then... I'll quickly get it on Instagram, Facebook before you notice it and go off on another one. I won't. I won't. That's it. No, job done. <laughs> job done. I, you feel better now. I do. I feel. I feel. I feel. It's cathartic. Me doing that. So, so the conclusion is: is any luggage, anything's possible, regardless of what kind of bike or whatever you got. Just go out there and research. Yeah. And if you have one of those jackets with the little leaf one things in it, glue it up. Yeah. Or beat the system. Put chocolate in the pockets. Don't put a MP3 player. MP3 put player. A twi- How old put am a I? Twix in it. Put a Twix in it. Exactly. Put a Twix in it. You'll get more joy out of that and you will out of a... Don't put an MP3 player in exactly. there, son. Don't. Put one of the marathon bars in there. That's it. And a Texan bar. 
Texan bar? They've got a listener from Texas now. I don't mean put literally ah. put a, a Texan in there. I mean there was a chocolate bar in the seventies. I thought you had Texan. like a little Texan thing. Yeah, hell of the year. Aye, they yeah, just no. need to feel better every again. Just no, take it me. A little fuck on lick on in there. Mm. I say, I say, I say, ball. Uh, That's Kentucky, though, isn't he? Anyway, so <laughs> we take it slightly, but yeah, no, absolutely. Um, use the pockets for whatever you want to use your pockets for. Don't let, don't let the man tell you what to put in your pockets. Pockets are for everyone, not just for music. That's, that's just that's for it. MBT players. You know? Remember, only a biker understands that pockets are for everything, <laughs> not just music. <laughs> <laughs> that is not going to be the outro. No, uh, that's it for episode eight. It's been um, it's been enlightening, put it that way. Um, this is what happens when you podcast late at night. Do you know what yeah, I mean? everyone is listening, we are we are super late tonight, um, purely because it was like we had free time this week, and we thought mm-hmm. let's just try and cram another recording in, and it might tell in the quality of the recording, or people might actually listen and comment and go, "You should do them mer- later, sure, more often." Yeah, but actually, yeah. they're either more informative or hysterical because the two years are rambling absolute nonsense so uh, again as always thank you for listening to us the average bikers and for supporting each of every episode and a little video remember check out the little video you will find a link to it on facebook instagram and on our youtube channel again to all you lovely people keep listening um, and as long as somebody's listening we will continue to be here and continue um, to make silly content because that's what this is it's just silly content and remember that is just the silly opinions of two average bikers so thank you very much folks for everything if you do want to get in touch with questions uh, a possible big question and you just want to tell us that you did know what the wee hole was for then please do get in touch please like share and more importantly subscribe to all our channels um, you can get in touch via our Facebook page or Instagram um, and you, we will see you at the next talk episode. So until next time, remember, only a biker understands why a dog sticks his head out of a car window. Headphones!